This week on Silver Screen, we take a look at the unseasonably cold weather, have a preview of the upcoming student council elections, hit the dance floor with English teacher Deborah Gascon, and get to know junior Matthew Poston. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, March 17th, and your St. Patrick's Day edition of the Silver Screen Report starts now. This week's unspring-like weather kicked off Sunday with something we didn't see all winter, snow. With a freeze warning extending through today, we've all been trying to stay warm this week. Sunday snow began to fall early in the morning and continued to fall for several hours. While it did stick to the ground, most snow was gone by the late afternoon. Mia, did you get a chance to play in the snow? No, actually. I was in Florida that weekend, enjoying the regular weather. <laughs> Maybe next year. My dog had a blast playing in the snow, but I'm definitely ready for Monday, which will be the first official day of spring. Speaking of official, earlier this week, student council met to announce the officers running in the upcoming elections and their plans for next year. Maddie McCormick was there. Student council members gathered this Monday in preparation for the upcoming elections. Today we just kind of discussed like the generic expectations for student council and got people to sign up for the positions that they are running and just kind of went over um, the rules and regulations for the election process. Today at student council we had an interest meeting for anyone who wants to run for office next year and they just got like a basic outline of what the class entails and like what they should expect if they want to run. We had a meeting that basically told everyone how to run and what they have to do to be um, on the ballots. These elections will determine how various school events are run in the next year. The elections will affect the school in um, big ways because it's up to the school to um, promote and also elect the officials and then also the elected officials will become student council and student council is in charge of running a lot of the school's events. Elections bring new blood into our system and just like more um, outlook of our student body and just like new people each year and I think that these elections are just going to give us like a broader like new ideas to bring into our student council. Because it allows people that are really passionate for leadership and want to make a difference uh, to come in and have a chance to be elected by their student body. If you are interested in becoming a part of student council, speak to student council sponsor Lori Humphrey in room 201 or ask a current member. Come to one of the interest meetings in order to run and then once you run you'll be, become an elected official and you'll be part of the class that helps plan everything and then also even if you aren't able to be in student council we have freshman board, sophomore board, junior board and senior board so those are also ways that you can get involved indirectly with student council and kind of help out and be involved in the school. They can get involved in student council by either running for office or by um, voting for who they want to be in office so that they can get their ideas in that way too. This has been Madison McCormick with your Silver Screen Report. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students what they want from next year's student council. I look for somebody who knows what they're doing, uh, they devote time into student council, and they're just an all-around good person. I'm looking for people who have the student body's best interest at mind and know what we need as a school and know how to get those things accomplished, um, who are very goal-oriented and love the school that's strong you know that knows what they're doing and uh, you know that makes you know things in school exciting. Um, from my concern from what I know that student council organizes homecoming and so I guess just to make another great year with like the dances and school events. Black History Club members gathered for their bi-weekly meeting to plan for their upcoming show. Here's China Wallace with the story. James Brown, Langston Hughes, and Martin Luther King are just some of the names brought up in Black History Club's bi-weekly meeting. Black History Club is a club designed to explore different um, contributions that black African Americans gave to our history. 
Black History Club is when a place where somebody can feel safe to talk about their experiences, even when it's upsetting and it's something that you thought somebody wouldn't understand it, but they do because they go through the same thing you do just because you're a different race or you're different. Members of the club remember why they joined for the first time. Because I wanted to know more about black history and come together with other African Americans in the school. I joined Black History Club because one, because some of my friends are in here, and two, because I want to learn more about black culture and everything, more music and poetry and literature and all that stuff. Well, I joined Black History Club because, like, uh, for two, two reasons, because, you know, it's important to know your history and, like, because, you know, history repeats itself. And, uh, and my mom wanted me to join too. <laughs> Premiering on March 30th, the Black History Club is hosting Our Legacy as a way to educate people that may not know the history of African American culture. The show that we're working on right now is basically about different decades of black history, like the 20s and the 30s, 40s, and all that stuff. We got Tupac, we got James Browns, we got um, Langston Hughes, a great poet, and um, we have many, many more. To help with the show or join Black History Club, see Ebonique Brown in room 241. This has been China Wallace with your Silver Screen Report. Canvases and clay aren't the only things that the art students have been painting on this week. Adam Amick has more. Students in Ms. Chasen's 2D design class put their brushes and creativity to work as they participate in the 2017 Vans Custom Culture Competition. So every year Vans does this competition nationwide for a thousand high schools called Vans Custom Culture and they send whatever teacher signs up they send you four boxes of their most popular types of shoes. We're making different designs based on the students decision uh, for Vans like the um, categories we have now were action, <laughs> sports, and music, and each student gets to make up their own design for each category to put on the vans. This contest gives students a wide range of creative freedom for their custom van shoe. Well, I like that we were able to like use our imagination, and it lets us, it gives us a chance to, you know, make the design that we want to make, what we desire to do. It just gives us a chance to express ourselves. The students, when they work on it, they get to like express how they feel about the certain category they have. Like they have their own design for the category. Winning this competition could benefit the school's art department budget and also allow students to grow in creativity. If we were to win, um, we one could raise money for our art department and then two, we could raise money for the school, which would be very good because it's a lot of things that for get into that they need a lot of money for. Um, I think it can definitely give them fire for their creative thoughts. There's a lot of things that we do in our art classes, but there's a lot of things we also don't touch on. So I feel like this gives students more of a creative uh, outlet to do more than just a requirement for an assignment or a lesson or a project. It's something that can go, you know, the, the sky's the limit. So. I feel like it's just a great opportunity for them to really let their creative juices flow. This has been Adam Amick with your Silver Screen Report. The SAT Word of the Week is Artisan, a noun, meaning a craftsman. In another installment of The Secret Lives of Teachers, feet fluttered and shoes tapped as English teacher Deborah Gascon went to her weekly tap class. Bailey Hunter checked it out. Deborah Gascon isn't your normal English teacher. On Wednesday, she becomes a tap dancer downtown at the dance floor. Oh, I've used to tap all my life and um, I was really looking for somewhere to go and being an adult it's hard to find somewhere to tap so this place I found online. The owner of the dance floor is the Carolina Girls coach and a very good friend of Miss Haynes and um, we went to dinner and we were talking about her opening her own dance studio and I said you should have tap, I love tap and so it just showed up from there. Gascon is a regular at the dance floor. I took tap at three until um, I was a junior in high school and then I joined my school's dance team and then I quit through college and then young like adult life and then started again about six years ago. The dance floor is a good place to go for Gascon to relax and focus on dancing. She is a great student. She, um, she just really enjoys class and doesn't take things too seriously. She's really patient with herself and um, she's always a joy to have in class I think because she's got great energy and she's always really positive and supportive of, of what we're doing here. So we love having her here. It's stress relief. 
I go there once a week for an hour and I can only worry about the steps and it's good music and I love my teacher and it's very laid back and there's fun people in there. It's a good challenge. It's exercise. Um, I leave and I feel really less stressful and calmer. Everyone should tap. Whoever invented putting noise on your feet was brilliant because it's the most fun to make noise when you walk and move. So everyone should come and tap with us. This has been Bailey Hunter with your Silver Screen Report. This week, Sam Aaron profiles one of Dutch Fork's most vibrant students. As he walks through the halls, junior Matthew Poston looks like just another student, but inside, he's a jack of all trades. So I'm in student council, uh, I'm part of junior board. Um, I play lacrosse on the team and uh, I'm in pep club. I think it's important to be involved with everything because you know you actually have a say in what you're doing and you know what's going on around the school. Outside of school, Matthew keeps himself entertained with a plethora of hobbies like rollerblading where he says he can play it anywhere. Usually I'm pretty bored outside of school so I juggle, I can juggle, um, I can rollerblade, I uh, have a puppet and I do a little ventriloquism. Um, I. Uh, Slack line. Um, I can play the harmonica, the ukulele, the kazoo, uh, yo yo bit, and the, the list goes on and on. While he enjoys entertainment, Matthew stays serious on the field and in the classroom. I'd say he's a strong leader, you know, keeps everyone on their track. He knows how to have fun, but he, uh, he's also serious when he needs to be, you know, he lets his voice be heard. He's a great student, he's very cheerful, uh, good demeanor, does his work, real joy to have in class. He also juggles, so that's, that's what I know about him. Matthew draws inspiration from anything he can find to keep himself and his peers entertained. I draw my inspiration from many people. Um, when I grew my mustache, I uh, really looked up to Tom Selleck. He had a great one. Wow. Um, you know, then other various people, you know, I find and I just say, wow, I just want to be like them. This has been Sam Aaron with your Silver Screen Report. Thanks, Sam. Book Madness is back. The Media Center has teamed up with the Beyond Best Sellers class to create Dutch Fork's own bracket of 16 young adult novels. The link to vote for round two is posted in your Fox Focus Google Classroom. The girls lacrosse team will be serving pancakes and bacon at Highway 55 tomorrow morning from 7.30 to 9.30. Tickets are $7 and available at the door. Palmetto Boys and Girls State applications are due next Friday. The applications are available in the school counseling office. Now here's Mia with more. Thanks, Autumn. Seniors, submit your pictures for the senior celebration. Add your photos to the senior Google Classroom. See the scrolling announcements for the classroom code. Also, don't forget to pick up your graduation supplies in the lobby in front of the arena. Rhodes graduation supplies will be here until 4 p.m. Only cash and money orders will be accepted. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Hi, this is Mallory Green with your Silver Screen Report. Today, as you can see, I'm out in the snow, and it's March, and it's crazy. And the best thing about it is it's on my brother's birthday. Well, you might know him. He's a senior. His name is Ian. And that's all for your Silver Screen Report.